Nancy Neely. I, for those of you that don't know me, I am the superintendent for the Lincoln County Board of Developmental Disabilities. My job here this morning is to welcome you. Um, this is the second year in a row. That's not like a very long you know, period of time, not a very long tradition, but we hope it is the beginning of, a, of an annual tradition where we kind of come together and celebrate um, employment for people with developmental disabilities. There's a lot of connections that go, and that's of course why we kind of titled the event, you know, um, Celebrating Connections. Uh, there's a lot of connections that we have in our local community that help really make employment possible for people. So a part of why we're here this morning too is to celebrate those connections and to think about some of our other, connect other future connections, the connections we haven't yet made that may lead to employment for someone with the developmental disabilities. You know, I love the month of October. Um, we got, you know, leaves that are all these pretty colors. We've got scary movies on television. Anybody watching AMC Fear Fest? No? Anybody else? Uh, no? Oh, okay, I got some takers back here. All right. Um, you know, there's apples in the orchard. There's pumpkins everywhere. Um, it's just October's a great month. But October is the month that nationally is kind of used to celebrate um, National Disability Employment Awareness Month. So really across the country, let alone in the state of Ohio, there's organizations like ours that are trying to raise community awareness that people with developmental disabilities can be a viable part of the workforce, and should be. So this breakfast is our way of, you know, thanking those of you who support our efforts in numerous ways um, to help Licking County citizens with developmental disabilities get and keep a job. You know, in March of 2012, Governor Kasich signed an executive order that established what has become known as the Employment First Initiative in Ohio. The executive order was later actually embedded into our state law, into statute. And I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but I really kind of wanted to just um, highlight a couple of sections because I think they're so um, uh, appropriate for what we're trying to do this morning. And you know, like most executive orders or official pieces of business, they start with the whereas's, okay, whereas. So whereas. All Ohioans, including those with developmental disabilities, should be encouraged to take part in the workforce and bring their individual strengths and talents to participate in Ohio business and industry. And, whereas, another whereas, individuals with developmental disabilities have the right to make informed decisions about where they work, to have opportunities to obtain jobs that may result in greater earnings, better benefits, improved health, and increased quality of life, and final whereas, whereas Ohio seeks to improve and coordinate efforts to increase employment outcomes for working age Ohioans with developmental disabilities. Now therefore I do hereby order and direct that community employment shall be the priority and the preferred outcome for working age Ohioans with developmental disabilities. Our board was pretty much inspired by that challenge. You know, we've been helping men and women with developmental disabilities find and keep jobs really since 1985, um, which we were kind of an early pioneer in the effort around efforts to find community employment. Um, and now we've got well over 100 people out in our community working day in and day out, and many of them are at jobs this morning. But after this morning, we do have a couple folks who are here with us and were able to to um, talk their bosses actually into coming with them. And so I would really like to ask Tammy Dumbald to stand up. Tammy. Tammy works for Hopewell Federal Credit Union, and I think she's brought her boss this morning. Do you want to introduce your boss? Yeah, his name is Jim Johnson. Jim Johnson, Hopewell Federal Credit Union. Jim, stand up for a minute. And we also have Erin Fawcett. Erin, where are you? There she is. Erin, stand up. Okay, and you know what, Erin, would you introduce your bosses? Yes, this is Dr. Lee and Dr. Cup. Okay. They're from Refugee Canyon. From Refugee Canyon Veterinarians Clinic. 
Thank you very much. Let's give a round of applause to you. You know, we have some of our employment services staff here with us this morning, too, and I'd like to, enter, to briefly recognize them. Could all of you stand up? Um, Kyle, Kyle Miller, who's our, who directs our complete employment services, Lisa Dunaway, who is the manager, and several of our employment specialists. We have Jacqueline, Alexander, where's Carl Yost? I saw him. There's Carl, there's Teresa Valentino, Where's Rod Williams? I saw Rod. Okay, and there's Rod. And did I miss anybody? And Angie. And Angie. Angie was sitting right next to, um, to Aaron because I think Angie worked with Aaron when she got her job. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, you know, most of us go to school because we have to. At least that's my understanding, is that school's still compulsory in the state of Ohio for um, until you turn 16, okay? And sometimes the purpose of that education is a little fuzzy and only gradually reveals itself as a necessary part of preparing us for a future where we work, we support ourselves, we contribute to our communities. Work's a significant part of our identity. How many of us, upon being introduced to new people, are asked, so what do you do? Or where do you work? How many of us ask these same questions to new people that we meet? In addition to giving us identity, work is how we support ourselves. We pay our bills, hopefully, pay taxes, hopefully have something left over with which to pursue our hobbies and our interests and, our, and recreation. Even the simple decision to have lunch or dinner with friends requires some financial resources. We have to pay for it. So work connects us with the world around us. It keeps us from being socially isolated. It's part of achieve, achieving that American dream, and that dream is no different for men and women with developmental disabilities. The developmental disability system has come a long way in the last 60 plus years, but we have a long way to go, and we need everyone's help before we can proudly say that most young adults with developmental disabilities graduate from high school and enter the workforce. It was with that in mind that the Board of Developmental Disabilities began a partnership with Licking County Department of Job and Family Services and the former Opportunity Links, which is now known as Ohio Means Jobs Licking County, over a year ago. Ohio Means Jobs Licking County has a reputation for high-quality workforce investment programs and services. They coordinate a wealth of resources for all Licking County job seekers. And equally important, they're an acknowledged and well-respected resource for Licking County employers in their search for qualified employees. Our partnership recognizes and builds on the strengths of both, or, both agencies. And our mutual goal is to increase the number of Licking County men and women with developmental disabilities who are employed. Later on in the agenda, you'll hear from John Fisher. John kind of usually doesn't need much of an introduction, but he will get introduced. Um, and Wendy Murphy, who's sitting to his right. Uh, Wendy is the supervisor of business services for Ohio Means Jobs Licking County. While strong support systems for all kinds of job seekers are important, it is business and industry that hires people, and a strong local economy that sets the stage for that. So later on in the agenda, you'll hear from John Hackathorn, who, yeah, John, you're kind of in the middle. There he is, okay. John is the business relations manager for the state agency known as Opportunities for Ohioans with Disabilities. But first, I'm really happy and pleased to introduce our first guest speaker, who is Sherry Hottinger. Sherry's another one of those people in Lincoln County who probably doesn't need much of an introduction, but she's going to get one anyway, okay? Um, Sherry is the president and CEO of the Lincoln County Chamber of Commerce. And, the, you know, the Chamber's active efforts to assure a strong local economy are a critical component of the employment equation for all job seekers. Uh, Sherry is, was appointed president of the chamber in 2004, a decade ago. 
Um, prior to that, she had actually served on the Chamber's board for three years. She currently serves on the board um, for Lincoln Memorial Hospital, as well as the hospital's um, development council. She's also on the board for the works. Grow Licking County Community Investment Corporation, Newark Development Partners Community in Investment Corporation, uh, and, is, and is active in many other ways, especially because she has three girls who have, um, uh, are, have either graduated from Newark City Schools or are currently in Newark City Schools. She's a very active parent. Um, Sherry has served on the board of directors of the Chamber of Commerce Executives of Ohio and was named as a Chamber Professional of the Year in February of 2010. In 2012, she was named one of our own Lincoln County hometown heroes. Prior to taking her position at the Chamber, Sherry served as treasurer for the J Company, which is an electrical contractor owned and operated by the Hottinger family and also served on New York City Council from 2000 to 2003. And Sherry, her husband Jay, and her three daughters uh, reside here in Newark. So without further ado, and I know that was a lot of ado, but let's, let's welcome Sherry. <laughs> Thank you. I always cringe when everyone reads those bios. Don't we all do that? You know, you have to send a bio and someone wants to introduce you. So, well, welcome and good morning. Uh, thanks for having me here this morning. It's nice to be here. Um, so, you're a scary movie kind of fan? I did not know that Just about in you. October. Only in October. Okay. Well, I, I, the only scary movies I would watch is probably on the Disney Channel. That's about. <laughs> how scary I like to get uh, around this time of year. But I was thinking as you were talking about um, why we're all here today, who has seen the movie Dave? I'm dating myself, okay? Anybody seen the movie Dave? So it kind of reminds me of why we're here today. Um, I've not seen the movie Dave. Uh, it's a guy who really was about finding beautiful jobs. That's what his sole purpose was, was to match the job share. And he happened just to look like the current president of the United States. And so he was a fill-in uh, for the president and ended up taking up the, the office. And he was a numbers guy there. <coughs> so, yeah, I love that movie anyway. But I think that what I love about it so much is that he really had a passion for matching people with jobs. And I think we in Lincoln County have that same passion. Especially Ohio means jobs in Lincoln County. It still takes me a little while. I want to say opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> Please do not find me every time I say that. Um, it's kind of a but, so what do I do at the chamber uh, that relates to why we're here today? I do wear many hats, um, one of which is, as Nancy mentioned, I'm the chairman this year of Grow Lincoln County Community Improvement Corporation. And for those of you who don't know what that is, basically it's an economic development organization that um, we cover the whole territory of Lincoln County. But we are really here for, for two reasons. Um, we're here to attract companies to locate in Lincoln County, and we're here to have help our current companies expand in Lincoln County. So really, it's about jobs. It's just, you know, all goes down to jobs, jobs, jobs. And that's what we are really here for, to try to make sure that our existing companies thrive and that they can expand um, and, and attract new companies here. And one of the reasons why new companies have come traditionally to Lincoln County, at least since I've been here in the last few years, Yeah. 
that not just looking county is facing. Now you get to really hear me scream. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not new, you know, a lot of people around the, the state are facing the same problem. But what I would say is that I think what's unique about Lincoln County is we're trying to tackle the problem and not just talk about it. You know, a lot of times you can talk through something forever and you know there's a problem, but if you're not willing to take a step up and do something about it, it really doesn't create any possibilities for anybody else. So something we realize that there's this, this problem uh, of trying to find a skilled workforce now for our employers. And really, I guess, on the flip side of that, that really could be a positive thing for people with disabilities because right now, we need workers. And a lot of employers, um, I think, might be looking outside the traditional bounds that they have looked to for employees before. But um, it's kind of hard when you're thinking about how do you get a, a workforce, kind of a pipeline workforce. And what has happened is that you have companies that are locating here. I think we created over 1,000 new jobs uh, in the last three years in Lincoln County and retain 700 to 800 of those current jobs as well. So you have all that pulling on you and then you have people retiring. So you've got a lot of people leaving the workforce. So it's creating a lot of vacancies. So we have been trying to figure out how can we fill that pipeline so that our companies, both existing and the ones that want to locate here, have that workforce. I think when I first started 10 years ago, they used to always say, what was the number one thing that site selectors looked for you know, in a community? And probably back then, it's kind of infrastructure and the site location somewhat, and incentives. That was always you know, a, a bad word. Now, if you ask what's the number one thing you're looking for in a, in a, a community, it's workforce. Probably it's the first three top things that they're looking for is workforce. So, um, how do you make that happen? How do you get that pipeline in place to be able to help these employers? So we're kind of looking at it from a, a two-phase approach. One is getting students um, to take advantage of the jobs that are here in Lincoln County. And we are focusing mostly right now on skilled trades and manufacturing. Uh, not saying that there's not problems in other industries of getting workforce, but those are the two areas that we are concentrating on. So getting students to understand how uh, going into the manufacturing field today is really exciting. It's a great career, the very well-paid positions um, along with their benefits. And it's not what you think of, what we would think of as manufacturing maybe 30 years ago. Dirty, you're standing in you know, the same line, you're doing the same thing, repetitive. It is so different today than what it is. So it's kind of getting to those students and then secondary getting to the parents of the students, which is sometimes more of a problem than getting to the students. Um, and then there's you know the adults that maybe have been laid off or maybe are underemployed. How can we get them better trained and uh, get them into the manufacturing uh, field? So we have piloted a program. It's called Project Prepare. Uh, Wendy and Lori are on that committee with me, and we are going to unveil it actually next week. Uh, we have two piloted schools, and it is looking valley and heat at this point in time. And we are going into the schools. Uh, we're making a presentation to sophomores, juniors, and seniors. There's a video that we have created uh, just to introduce manufacturing to them and all the possibilities that manufacturing has to offer. So we'll be showing the video, uh, they'll get to hear a little bit of spiel from myself, and then we're bringing industry people in as well to talk about, I work in manufacturing today, and here's what my career has been, here how it's exciting, uh, here's why you should consider it. Um, and then we've actually arranged to take them to three manufacturing sites in Licking County. And that's something that traditionally hasn't been done. Uh, you know, manufacturers are funny about having uh, kids under the age of 18 in their facility. I don't know why that would be, but uh, we have, we've been able to do that. We have partners in industry, I think, because they need workers. So they're willing to uh, maybe expand a little bit more than what they were before. But, so we're doing this uh, Leading Valley next week. We have our, our teacher presentation and our student presentation next week. And then the three uh, field trips, I guess you would say are in November, and we're also partnering with Lincoln County Foundation. They've been a great partner with us in recognizing the need. You know, we have scholarships a lot of times for someone like my daughter, who was at Ohio State uh, this year, uh, but what about those kids that 
maybe don't want to go to a four-year college. And, you know, I'm sorry if I'm going to offend somebody in the room. I might. It's, it's a good possibility. I usually do that occasionally. But not everybody is cut out to go to a four-year college. Not everybody is cut out to go to a two-year college. Well, guess what? Our message to these students, you have a path in manufacturing and the trade skills no matter what you want to do. You can get a job today after you graduate from high school, so we do want them to graduate from high school. That message is not changing. But whether you just want to graduate from high school and get them a job right away, whether you want to do a certificate program through COTC or CTEP or get a two-year degree through COTC, or if you want to be an engineer and you want to do the four-year program, manufacturing has it all. And so we want to make sure we're, not, we're grabbing those kids that maybe sometimes fall through the cracks because we tend to tout four-year colleges all the time. You have to have a four-year degree in order to have a good job. And that's just not true. And so we need to kind of change that philosophy, which, you know, is, is hard to change because we value education. It's not that we're saying that's not good. But not every student is that, is, wants to do that. So our message to them is we have room for you wherever you are in that field, wherever the path you, that you want to take. So that's what we're really working on right now in terms of workforce. We are still in the, I guess, um, I hate to say talking stage because we're doing more than talking, but in the adult stage of trying to figure out how can we get these adults employed in better paying positions maybe than what they are now, and how can we fund that? I mean, there's a whole funding aspect that comes with that. And you know, someone might say, yeah, I would love to take that training, but it's $8,000 and I can't afford it. But they might be really good at their hands and really good you know, skills and even just, you know, disabilities. How can we make that happen for them? So we are working with Ohio Means Jobs, uh, John and, and uh, Wendy, and trying to figure out, and the foundation, because they are really on board with this, and trying to figure out how we can, how can we fund that. And I believe, and I, and I know my manufacturers pretty well, um, they will step up too. So it's not just going to be on the social services side, it's also going to be on industry side that they're willing to step up and help pay for these services too because obviously they need workers. So it's going to benefit, uh, benefit them as well. So I guess I'm just here to deliver the message that we're working on it. We recognize that there are workforce issues, but it is an opportunity for everyone to realize that we need and we probably can employ so many more people um, that we are today and it's needed. I mean, this isn't just something that, oh, down the pike, yeah, we need to be thinking about this. Right now, I would say we're starting to get behind the eight ball, and I don't like to be in that position. You know, we always like to be proactive, but it's happening so quickly that, um, you know, we haven't been able to, to really get in front of it. There's other communities that are a lot far behind than we are, so I think Lincoln County does a great job when they recognize that there is a problem or an issue. Uh, we tend to just put people together in the right room, and figure it out, and get it done. And so that's one of the things I love about being in Lincoln County is we really do solve problems for um, really anything, not just manufacturing. But so I've probably talked long enough. I don't know. I mean, so you can cut me off. So um, I'm happy to take any questions afterwards. Is that what, how you're doing that, or talk with anybody afterwards? So I just appreciate all that you do. It makes my job easier uh, when we have companies that come here and I can tout the wonderful workforce that we have. So. Please continue to keep up the good job. And if I can ever be of any assistance to you or the chamber, uh, please call me anytime. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sherry. Enjoyed that. Um, our next speaker is John Hackathorn. John is the Business Relations Manager for Opportunities for Ohioans with Disabilities. Uh, a position that he started in May of 2013, and, and my guess is he's doing a lot of traveling across the state, okay? <laughs> um, prior to working for Opportunities for Ohioans with Disabilities, John was Director of External Relations, Eastern Ohio, for the Ohio Chamber of Commerce, where he was a liaison to over 600 businesses and responsible for, community, for communicating the Ohio Chamber's uh, agenda on many policy issues that impact Ohio's businesses. John also served as a Medicare counselor and legislative liaison for the Ohio Department of Insurance. And while he was with the Ohio Department of Insurance, gave hundreds of presentations on Medicare benefits to Ohio's Medicare population, directly counseled beneficiaries, and served as the liaison to Ohio's congressional delegation during the Medicare Part D implementation. John's a native of Marietta, Ohio, 
and a graduate of The Ohio State University. He and his wife, Deb, live in Upper Arlington, Ohio. So, John, welcome. Thank you, Nancy. Good morning, everyone. Since it is October, I'm going to do something truly horrifying and scary. I'm going to give you a little bit of a civics lesson today. No. Uh, again, thank you for having me this morning. Yes, I do travel a lot from the uh, west side of Columbus to here was, uh, it was just like pulling out of my driveway this morning, so that was very nice. Uh, I, I'm really, really happy to be uh, in front of this group and talk to a bunch of, of employers and individuals who've made a commitment to hire individuals with disabilities, which is the agency mission for Opportunities for Ohioans with Disabilities. You have probably worked with us and not known it for a couple reasons. First of all, up until just over a year ago, we were known as the Rehabilitation Services Commission. When you hear rehabilitation, everybody's first thought goes to corrections. Or just truly, we did an Ohio poll, I mean, you know, <laughs> um, or um, uh, addiction counseling or something, you know, something along those lines. And so that was why we changed our names. We wanted a name that would truly reflect the mission of our, uh, the, the, the vision of our agency's mission. We provide vocational rehabilitation services for individuals, uh, Ohioans, who either through um, an onset disability or a congenital disability have found that they have barriers to work. And what we do through our counselors and many community providers, such as the Licking County Board, such as Goodwill, we help those people get back to work. We find, we define what their employment goal is and write a vocational rehabilitation plan, and with those partners, uh, help those people find a path so they can get back to work. The great thing about our program is people are not compelled to join our program. They volunteer, they come and seek us out. And so we have truly motivated individuals who are seeking uh, to get back to work and want to be able to be a productive part of society through employment. And that is one of the great uh, values of hiring individuals with disabilities. It isn't just the feel-good factor of you're doing the right thing. It is the right thing. It's the right thing for a couple reasons. But what many businesses are finding out, and it's playing out through study after study, hiring individuals with disabilities is a very profitable Thing for businesses to do. So the agency mission, as I said, is to help individuals with disabilities find a path back to employment. Uh, we have several uh, divisions within the agency. We have a Bureau of Vocational Rehabilitation uh, that handles the primary load of our uh, cases. We also have services for the visually impaired as well, too, and handle about 30% about of our cases as well. We handle folks with all types of disabilities. Uh, we handle, uh, we work with folks from as early as age 14, all, there, and there's no ceiling on the folks that we work with. At any given time, we'll have over 20,000 people within our caseload, uh, working through their plans, and the end goal is a job. So last fiscal year, which just ended on September 30th, we helped over 4,500 individuals find jobs uh, throughout the state, and that is something that we're very, very proud of because we're seeing that number grow and grow. Part of the reason is we want to make, we want to get people to our program so that we can help them out. Another part of the reason that number is growing is because businesses are finding the value and seeking us out as well too. Just a quick show of hands, I don't know anybody in this room that uh, uh, has a federal contract. Your business has a federal contract? I don't. I don't know if you want to disclose that. Oh, I saw one quick one right now. I'm sure you're aware, uh, 503, Section 503, uh, if you're a federal contractor, uh, you, must uh, you must demonstrate that you try to achieve 7% integration of individuals with disabilities into, work into your workforce. So that is something that is compelling in uh, businesses to seek us out and help uh, find individuals with disabilities, qualified individuals with disabilities, a place to uh, work at their organization. That's a great reason too, but as I said before, study after study is bearing out that the value of hiring an individual with disability bears very long, good long-term benefits for companies as well. 
So in Licking County, over the last four years, OOD consumers have found over 141 jobs with over 95 employers. So we're very, very happy uh, to have such a great invested uh, partner such as Licking County. I want to talk about just a couple of employers that have hired multiple individuals over a period of time. Animatic, you know, Sherry was talking about manufacturing. We know Animatic uh, is a very good partner. Denison University, Goodwill Industries, not only are they a partner, a provider of ours, uh, that helps our services, but many times uh, they come, uh, they hire our folks as well too. Uh, Kroger, uh, Linko Inc., McDonald's, Newark Metropolitan Hospital, Travel Centers of America, Walmart. That's just a few of the 95 uh, companies that have hired in Licking County that have hired uh, OOD consumers. We thank you very much, everybody who has done that. And uh, we want to build on the momentum that we have and build on those partnerships to find a way to do that uh, at, a, at a higher level. We are very invested with uh, Employment First, with the Licking County Board. Uh, our counselor, Chauncey Smith, and our supervisor, Counselor Rose Reed, work very close with the Licking County Board. Uh, community integrated work for uh, those Licking County um, DD consumers and our consumers as well to find valuable work outside of a sheltered setting and we'll continue to do that uh, for the foreseeable future. So those partnerships are critical and crucial to us. Not only the Licking County Board but providers such as Goodwill, Ohio Means Jobs provides a wonderful referral source for us. People who are seeking employment uh, go to Ohio Means Job Centers and uh, at those, the Ohio Means Job Centers, they do a little, they do some screening for us, and, and if the person uh, fits, you know, might be able to uh, benefit from OOD services, they're referred back to us. Local chambers are a valuable, critical resource for us. And Cherry, if you've not heard from Kelly Jordan yet, let me know and I'll make sure we get my my world from the chamber. In, in, in talking with uh, local chamber presidents like Sherry, um, we know that workforce development is the number one critical issue. The, you know, the gap in terms of the available jobs and available workers is something that faces employers every day. And what we want to be able to do is to let employers know within an area there is an untapped uh, resource, a very valuable pool of resources of workers with disabilities who can help you fill that need. So we want to create those partnerships utilizing the local resources and local partners in order for you to help uh, fulfill your workforce need and also get a valuable employee who's going to add a lot of benefit, not just fiscally but morally, um, but from, I'm sorry, from a morale standpoint as well, into your workplace. So we do have shiny new toys. We, got, we finally got something that we feel that is suitable to bring out into the public to let people know what we do and how we do it. And uh, after I'm done speaking or after we're done, I'd be happy, more than happy to give this to you all and talk about uh, in greater detail what we do as an agency and how we might be able to um, assist you. One of the tools that, or one of the resources that's available to businesses uh, that have in the past or want to uh, take on initiatives to hire individuals with disabilities is the Ohio Business Leadership Network. The Ohio Business Leadership Network is a business-to-business -business organization of, of companies who have those initiatives in place or want to take them to a higher level. Usually the uh, membership, the, 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 the company is a member, but the representatives are generally uh, human resources officers or diversity inclusion managers. And they uh, meet regularly, uh, it's, it's a networking organization, but we help administer the, uh, uh, the Ohio Business Leadership Network and provide them with resources and tools to help them reach those goals that they are trying to achieve uh, through hiring uh, more individuals with disabilities. As a matter of fact, I think it's on Monday. Monday, uh, part of the presentation or part of the resources we're giving uh, or we're helping facilitate is a presentation on reasonable accommodations. So there's many dynamics in the workplace that have to be taken in consideration if you are going to hire an individual with disabilities. 
So what we want to do as an agency and uh, through administering organizations like the Ohio Business Leadership Network is to give you those tools and resources to do just that. So we're not just uh, giving you uh, access to the workforce talent. There's many other services that we can provide beyond that that can help you successfully onboard and retain an individual with, with a disability. So that is the mission of the Department of I'm sorry, I'm almost the Department of Insurance, Opportunities for All Highlands with Disabilities. Um, we are being much more proactive in letting folks, um, letting folks know what we do and how we do it in order to uh, forge those partnerships and provide more opportunities for individuals with disabilities. Uh, we're going to wait for questions at the end then. That's great. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for your commitment. Uh, to hire individuals with disabilities. Thank you, John. Uh, now I'm going to introduce our next speaker, also by the name of John, Mr. John Fisher, who, who a little bit like Sherry doesn't need much introduction, but is going to get one anyway. Um, John Fisher has been the director of the Lincoln County Department of Job and Family Services since July of 2001. He has a Master of Public Administration degree from the University of Dayton. That's also my alma mater. We never talked about that. Okay. Yeah, and a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science from Muskingum College. John was a sergeant in the United States Army Reserve. As Director of Job and Family Service, he is responsible for all of the services and the programs operated by the local entity, including public assistance, children's services, adult protective services, supportive services, and workforce development. John has extensive involvement in our community and with various professional organizations. Um, in addition to being a member um, of the Ohio Job and Family Services Directors Association. He is also on our local Food Pantry Network Board. He's a board member of the Newark Digital Academy Board of Education, a member of the United Way Board of Directors since 2012, United Way Vice President, Chairing and Planning Committees, and he's been a Newark Kiwanian since 1988. So, welcome John. Thank you, Nancy. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I was asked today to introduce Wendy Murphy, but uh, as I kept looking at the theme for today, I thought, how appropriate. Celebrating connections. What a wonderful, wonderful theme. Not only for today's event, but also for our community at large. We live in such a collaborative, cooperative community and I am so thankful for that. I see eyewitness every day the good that goes on, not only for the disabled, the disadvantaged, the unemployed, the underemployed, but truly across all sectors for our entire community. Celebrating connections is something that we in Licking County live with every day and I am so grateful for that. With a theme like celebrating connections in the job that I hold, given the election season that it is, I would be a little remiss if I didn't add to that theme the phrase keep caring. And for you that may not know, that is the theme for the Children's Services Levy this fall, to keep caring for our abused and neglected children. And I would ask for your support. I would also ask that you consider the senior levy that is also on the ballot, because both of those levies connect vulnerable populations to the services that are essential, which is really the theme that we're here today. So I ask for your support and your understanding to connect those abused and neglected children to essential services, to connect those elderly individuals to their essential services. 
but celebrating connections. Iowa means jobs, Licking County is your county employment and training one-stop center, but it is connected with a variety of partners from the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services to OOD, which I'll always call rehabilitation, I apologize. Uh, old dogs, you can't treat, you know, teach old dogs new tricks. Uh, COTC, CTEC, OSUN, AARP are but some of the partners who connect to provide the essential services for those looking for employment together with those employers looking for a qualified workforce. In recent months, we've tried to enhance that connection through a whole variety of partnerships, and as Nancy had mentioned, through a partnership with DD. But we also created and developed a business services team within the structure of Ohio Means Jobs. The team's focus is to connect with businesses, determining or helping them to determine their employment needs, to bring resources to bear, not only in the job applicants, but also in other resources that can help train or reduce the cost of training for employers. So this morning, I am pleased to introduce the supervisor of the Ohio Means Jobs Business Services team, Wendy Murphy. Wendy's background is sales and marketing. She holds a bachelor's degree in business administration. Wendy not only has the skills to succeed, but if you know Wendy, you know that she has the enthusiasm to ensure that success. Wendy helped establish the Workonomics team and is currently chair of that team. And if you're not aware of Workonomics, it's another great example of a community <coughs> connection. Workonomics has probably been around, what, Sherry, five to ten years? Ten years. And it is a collaborative effort of economic developers, workforce developers, education educators who get together in a room to discuss how we can better connect employment opportunities with those in need. Wendy is devoted to Ohio Means Jobs Licking County and helping employers and job seekers make those critical matches. With that, please join me in welcoming Wendy Murphy. Good morning. I have to apologize ahead of time. I have a cold, so I'm, I know I sound a little nasally. I know. So yesterday I sounded like a man, so it's getting better, I promise. So I just want to talk to you today about some of the services that we provide at Ohio Means Jobs Licking County. I think a lot of people in the room that we have worked with, but um, I want to just go over some of the services that we can offer. If you're currently taking advantage of those services, that is wonderful. If you're not, we want to assist you. We can save your company time and money. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is when you are hiring and you are advertising, it, it costs a lot of money. We recently did an ad to advertise for our annual expo. And I know that it can be very, very expensive. One of the things that we can do for you is advertise your job leads. And we have numerous ways that we do that. We can do it through ohiomeansjobs.com. We can advertise the job leads through there. But also, we can advertise it through an email blast that we have. And currently, we have an email blast that goes out to close to 4,000 job seekers daily. And you yourself can go to ohiomeansjobs.com and post your positions. But what we're asking is if you decide to do that, and we want you to do that, we still want to know that you're hiring because we still can connect you with the job seekers that are coming into Ohio Means Jobs, Licking County. It gets so confusing. I love that we, all the one stops are now called Ohio Means Jobs, and I love that. But when you get up and you speak and you're talking about Ohio Means Jobs Licking County, and then you're talking about OhioMeansJobs.com, it gets very, very confusing. So I, I, I want to tell you that yes, we use OhioMeansJobs.com. Any job lead that comes into our office, we are going to post on OhioMeansJobs.com. But you yourself can do that. It's a very, very simple process, but I want to reiterate, we want to know when you do that. 
um, because we want to know that you're hiring so that we can make referrals as well. Um, one of the things that um, we do is we can also, after you're hiring, we can bring those individuals in and we can have your applications on site. We can pre-screen those applications. What does that mean to you? It means you're saving time and money. We can pre-screen those individuals and you're going to give us what you're looking for, your requirements. We're using your requirements when we pre-screen. We pre-screen those individuals and then we're only referring on the individuals that we think you might be interested in hiring. In addition to pre-screening, we also have assessments that we can do. If you, if you um, have work case assessments that you would like to um, have administered, we can do that on our site. And then we're referring the people that have met those assessment scores on to you. Um, I, I lost my place because I haven't even been looking <laughs> down. Um, one of the things, too, is if, if you're a company, um, we've had this happen, you don't want your name out there. I don't want to use OhioMeansJobs.com or I don't want to use your email blast because I don't want my company's name out there. We're, we're, we like to be discreet about the fact that we're hiring because we, we do not want 100 people calling us a day asking us questions. We can post your positions as confidential. So we will collect the applications, we will collect the resumes, and then we will forward those on to you. Another thing that we do is you can come to our site. We've, to interview people, to do recruitment events. We have a large room where we do recruitment events. And you can come in and you can do your recruitment from our office, and then we have interview rooms that right after you, if you want to have a recruitment event, right after, during the recruitment event, you can actually go to an interview room and interview the candidates that you're interested in. We also have staff that is available to you to sit in on those interviews. We understand that um, during the recession, a lot of people cut back on their human resources teams. Well, we're there to support you in that. We um, currently are helping a company, and one of our staff members is sitting in on all of those interviews. And we would be glad to do that for you. Um, one of the things that I really, really want to tell you about today, because I, if anybody in here knows me, I'm all about free. I'm all about bargains, I'm all about coupons, any deal I can get, I want to get that deal. So I'm going to talk to you today about a deal that you can get um, by using our services. We have something called on-the-job training, and if you haven't heard of that, maybe you've heard it called OJT. And what that is, is if you hire an eligible candidate, we can reimburse your company while they're in training. 50% of their wages, up to $6,000 or six months, whichever comes first. If there is an employer in the room that is not currently using, utilizing this, I can't understand why. Because it is a, a, a valuable, valuable service to you. And what we're in hopes of is that you hire those individuals and we can, again, pay 50% of their wages while they're in training. That is a, a very expensive, I, I think any employer knows that that is a very expensive time. When you hire somebody and you're training them, it is very expensive to your company. So we want to help with that. And one of the reasons we want to help with that is we're hoping if we can save you money, that only means that you're going to hire more people. So if you're not currently taking advantage of that, please do. There are some giveaways on your table and they have our phone number on it. Guarantee you, if you call our front desk and say, I'm interested in on-the-job training, they're going to get you to the right person mm -hmm. so that you can talk to them, we can get a contract in place, and we can start making referrals to you today. We'll be at the office, we're going back there today. You can call us today, <laughs> and we will do that. It, it's important to us that we be, that, that we be able to help people um, during that time of training for individuals. Um, one of the things that um, people often think is, okay, she just talked about, and they're a government agency, so when she brings that paperwork out, 
it's going to be in a binder like this. It's not true. It's a very, very easy process. I wish Katie Cobb could have made it today from Owens Corning. We've done quite a few on-the-job trainings with them, and she is a huge advocate of it because it does not take um, any time at all. And the staff will come to your facility to get you to sign the paperwork, help you with the paperwork. So it's a very easy process. Please um, consider taking advantage of it. Um, in addition, I, I want to talk to a service that we're really not having to use um, frequently right now. It's called Rapid Response. What that is, is if a company is laying off or closing, we can come out to your facility and we can talk to the individuals that are impacted by the layoff. We can tell them about the services that are available to them. We can let them know about uh, the training that's offered through our office. We also bring someone uh, from the state of Ohio with us to talk to them about their unemployment compensation benefits. One of the reasons that we do that is unemployment compensation can only be accessed now by telephone or online. So this is the one opportunity for those individuals that are being impacted to talk to someone face to face about their unemployment compensation. Fortunately for us, uh, this is not a service that we're having, having to offer frequently at this point, and I'm so grateful to that, for that. There was a point during the recession when I would walk into places and I would see the look on people's faces. They knew why I, I was there, and um, it, it's not a good feeling. Now when I go in, it's because they're hiring, and they look at me and they're like, oh, she's here because we're doing well. That's great. That's what I want to be known for. <laughs> so... Um, I, and I would like, and I don't want to embarrass them, but my staff is here today, and I would like them to stand up because I really want you to know, uh, Carla's already giving me the eye, <laughs> I, I want you to know that this staff is available to you to help you with all of um, your employment needs. So if you could please stand up, I'd really appreciate that. tearing up because everybody knows that I tear up really, really easy. Um, <laughs> so I'm very passionate about what we do, but I'm honored and, and uh, blessed to be surrounded by people that share the same passion, and they're so dedicated to helping local employers, the job seekers, uh, get placed in positions that they feel passionate about. So I'm, I'm, I feel very honored to have such a strong team. And everything that we do would not be possible without them. So I, I really want to thank them for that. Um, I would also like to tell you about two of the events. I talked about how we like to recruit, we hold job fairs, so forth. I'd like to talk to you about two events that we have coming up that we need more employers for. The, uh, you know, as many as we can get. So if you're currently hiring, we are having a seasonal job fair at the Indian Mail Mall, and it is on Monday, November 3rd, from 3 to 7. So if you are currently hiring, it says seasonal job fair. I'm not going to lie. You don't have to be hiring seasonally. If you're hiring at all, we want you there, because the job seekers will be there, and it'll be a way for you to make a connection. Then on November 12th, we are having our second annual Hire a Veteran Month job fair. And it's going to be held at the VFW Post from 10 to 2 on November 12th. And that is located on 4A Street. So we'd like additional employers for that, as well as if you do know a veteran that's looking for work, and we would love for you to make those referrals. You have our contact information. We did give you giveaways. You have our contact information on the table. Um, please, please take that with you. If you don't, we have to collect it all and take it back. So please take that with you. Uh, the last thing I want to talk to you about, because we are talking about connections, and we have a bus business advisory committee, and we get together quarterly with businesses, local businesses, and if we only get together for an hour. But what we do is we want you there because we share the services that we offer, but also what, what we're looking for are ways to be creative in helping you. 
So we'd like you to come to the Business Advisory Committee because we would like for you to tell us what it is that we can do for you. I've talked about some of the services that we provide, but certainly we are so open-minded to any suggestions that you um, have that could make us better at what we do. So I'd like to invite you to that. Our next one is in January. If you would like to call our office and get put on the email list for that, please uh, do so. And I want to also mention that that Business Advisory Committee, we used to have two separate committees. Lincoln County Board of DD had a committee, and Ohio Means Jobs Lincoln County had a committee. And what we've done in an effort to make it more efficient uh, for our local employers is we have combined those so that we're only asking for an hour of your time quarterly but if you could please think about coming to that if you have ideas we certainly want to hear them one of the things that we learned in one of these committee meetings was one of our employers was having trouble with their work opportunity tax credits so what we did is we invited the expert in we invited somebody from the state of Ohio to come in talk to employers about how to process their paperwork for work opportunity tax credits so that they could get the credits that they were entitled to. Those are the types of things we want to do. You come to us if you have concerns, suggestions, we want to help you with those. So I'd like to thank each of you for being here today and if you have any questions, uh, myself and my staff will be here and we would like to answer any of the questions that you may have about what we offer. But we also gave you a beautiful take home that kind of talks about all of the things that um, we offer through Ohio Means Jobs Lincoln County. So I, if you could please take this back with you. If you, have any, if you go back and you, you're thinking, can they help me with this? Call us. We'll answer the question. And generally, we're never going to say no. Okay? Thank you very much. You know, I didn't initially think about um, the group here who, uh, who has shared their comments with us this morning as being a panel of experts, but in fact they are. They are a panel of experts when it comes to um, the importance of workforce in, in the uh, local economy, uh, for business and industry, and how to help connect people who are looking for employment with, uh, with business and industry. So, and I wonder, does anyone have a question they would like to pose for any, any of the members uh, at the head table? I'm sure they, they're just, yes, Craig. Uh, there's one of the jobs that we talk about providing, <coughs> helping companies cover their costs for training and development. Now, people wouldn't be working they would be in school. Is this what you're talking about? It, it, could, be, it could be training, uh, on the job training with the employer, learning the basic skill set of the job. Uh, this is training. I'd like to find a way to um, train maybe three to six people, but they'd be in class. Oh, and they're already your employees? They could be. Okay. Or they wouldn't hire. So. Okay, there has been a um, revised or um, uh, another emphasis based on what they're calling incumbent worker, mm -hmm. individuals who perhaps are employed but need skills enhancements to move up uh, to meet also other additional requirements of the employers. And that has been, uh, I guess that emphasis on that has been renewed, and there has been some opportunities to perhaps review that. Uh, the state has indicated that there will be some special project funding, so contingent upon what it is and how it's structured, we may be able to request for State, if those type of incumbent training through Windy yep, could, could work. But part of the legislation right now is still wanting to focus primarily on the unemployed, but they realize if they can get those people who are employed at a lower skill level, then get their skill level enhanced and they move up, then it creates other opportunities for other people. Are you talking about disabled people or? It, it could be anyone. It could be a disabled and economically disadvantaged person. It could be a whole variety. I think that's Why are you considering disabled? I, I guess that that's um, a question that maybe for Nancy, but <laughs> what I, I want to just throw this out there because we have talked about it, and it is a partnership. 
But we help anyone that's looking for employment. Anyone and everyone. A lot of you think you have to be unemployed to use Ohio Means Jobs in King County. You do not have to be unemployed. You can have a position and be looking for another position, and we will help you. You do not have to be in receipt of any benefits from anywhere to, to come into Ohio Means Jobs and receive our services. We will help anyone and everyone that's looking for work. Um, we've helped people that um, have no employment. I personally have helped someone that um, made more money than I'll probably make in a lifetime. But we helped him, and mm -hmm. he's very, very successful. And so, um, you know, he came to us, he had a, a book as a resume. He left us with a two-page resume, and he got re-employed. So we can help anyone that's looking for employment. Um, the other thing is, is if you are talking about hiring people, when you hire that person for an OJT, they are in fact your employee. Mm -hmm. We're reimbursing you. It's a reimbursement program. So you pay them, and then we pay you back half the wages. Well, I'm nursing that in a way to pay people to learn so I can hire them to do a very specific type of work. Okay. Okay, then yeah. that's something we could, we could definitely talk about. That's great. That, that's fantastic. I'm, I'm glad you were able to respond to that. As far as disability, um, you know, there, there are many definitions of disability. Maybe just for this morning, I would, I would very carefully say, you know, whenever someone has a fairly significant impediment or barrier to work, they, they may well have a disability. So. One of the things that is also worth noting when we're talking about individuals with disabilities, over 70% of disabilities are invisible to you and me. Right. And we serve folks that it's, there's, a, there's a quite obvious visible disability, or you would not know. I would imagine, and forgive me for doing this speculation, but it's true, many of you in this room right now could probably qualify for OOD services and not realize it. Uh, it's, as Nancy said, it's barriers to work which qualify as an individual uh, with a disability that could utilize OOD services or Lincoln County Board services as well. Thank you. Anyone else have a question? That was kind of fun. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, in the interest of getting you all out of time, um, certainly I want to thank our speakers, Wendy, John and John and Sherry, we really appreciate your support. I said John and John. Uh, <laughs> um, I'd like to thank the Doubletree for feeding us this morning. That was a good breakfast. Um, really appreciate the time all of you came to join us this morning. Again, it really was about celebrating our all of our various connections. We all play kind of a different role. Um, you know, some of us are using services, some of us are providing services, and some of us are just looking for good employees, okay? And, ev and ev everybody is needed. All, all are welcome. Um, so we celebrate that with you. We hope we have a beneficial relationship uh, for a very, very long time. You know, I think before we absolutely conclude, I just really would like to thank Tammy and Erin one more time for taking time out of their busy work schedules with their employer to be here this morning. It really, it really kind of helps um, give all of us a visual on why we're, why we're working so hard to do these, to do these things. So thank you very much, everyone. Have a great Friday. Go Bucks. <laughs>